Oscar Wilde once said that it is what you read when you don't have to that determines what you'll be when you can't help it. Simply put, what you put into your brain makes an enormous difference in who you are and who you will become. So why do so few people actually read books on a regular basis after they finish their formal education and get launched into the real world? There's no shortage of excuses, that's for sure. When I tell people that I read about three times as many books as we summarize here on Read It For Me, I hear all the excuses in the book, most of them revolving around the lack of time to read. A book will sit on their nightstands for weeks, they tell me. However, there's another side to the same coin here. Perhaps it's because they just don't know how to read fast enough. If you're willing to put aside the excuse that you don't have enough time and learn how to double or even triple your reading speed, you might unlock a new world of possibilities for yourself. In the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn the skills and tricks that the world's fastest readers use to gain access to more knowledge than you ever thought possible. Understanding where you are today. If you're like me, you probably aren't testing your reading rate on a weekly basis, if ever. So just like any good exercise program, we're going to figure out where you're starting from and where you want to go. Grab something that you enjoy reading. It could be a novel, your favorite magazine, anything that has a passage that you haven't read before and that is at least a thousand words long. Now, grab a timer and set it for one minute. Remember to read at a rate that you find comfortable. This isn't the final exam and there's nobody here to impress. The impressing comes later when you double or triple your reading speed. When the timer is finished, mark the last word you read and count up the words. It's a lot quicker if you figure out the average number of words per line and then count the total number of lines you read. Now, find out how you stack up. Here are some broad categories across the general adult population. If you read under 180 words per minute, you're a below average reader. If you read between 180 and 240 words a minute, you're an average reader. If you read between 240 and 350 words a minute, you're reading at an average college level. If you're reading between 350 and 500 words a minute, you're an above average reader. And finally, Above 500 words per minute, you're a superior reader. Now that we know where you're starting from, let's figure out how you got there and what we can do to get you above that 500 word mark and perhaps even up to 1,000. Two things that prevent you from becoming a speed reader today. Backtracking. There are two different types of backtracking in reading, conscious and unconscious. Conscious backtracking is when you read a passage of text and you realize that you didn't completely comprehend it, so you go back and read it again. This isn't the most effective way to increase your reading comprehension, but there isn't anything inherently wrong with it. However, unconscious backtracking is one of the most time-consuming reading habits of normal people. Have you ever read an entire passage of text and realized that you drifted off to some other place and don't remember a damn thing you read? I sure have. In fact, the average reader rereads 15% of the material they're reading because of this. Vocalizing words. There are three stages of reading out loud. The first one is the one you learned in kindergarten where you literally read the words out loud. We're going to assume that you've moved beyond that stage and can read a book on the train into work without annoying the rest of the passengers. The second stage is subvocalizing, where you're moving your lips but no words are coming out, which is usually learned in grade school as the first step away from saying the words out loud. Again, we'll assume that you're beyond this point. The third stage is another form of subvocalizing and happens when you're still hearing the words in your head as you read them, even though you aren't moving your lips. This is where most people end up, and they usually subvocalize all of the words as they see them. Take a minute and reread the passage right now and see if you're subvocalizing it. Why are we subvocalizing? Because we've been trained from an early age that we're only able to see and comprehend one word at a time, and that we must read them in sequential order. Logically, this makes sense. However, like many other situations, logic places a very limiting belief on us that we never contemplate breaking out of. 
So let's figure out how to do that. Reading with a purpose and on purpose. If you're like me and most of the people in the world, you were taught to read one way for everything that you read. Of course, you're going to read a novel that you're reading for pleasure much differently than you will a business book that you're looking to learn a set of principles from. But there we go, reading them in exactly the same way, one word at a time. Why are you reading this anyways? The first thing you can do to combat this mistake is to be very clear about why you're reading and exactly what you want to take from it. If it's strictly for entertainment value, then you'll be less worried about comprehension and speed and more worried about the atmosphere you set so that you can lose yourself in the moment. However, if you're reading a business book that you want to apply to your life, you'll be more worried about speed so you can learn more quicker, comprehension so you can understand what you're reading, and recall so that you can remember what you learned. Understand how authors write. The second thing you can do is to understand how authors write. Fiction authors will often write in a way to keep you so engrossed in the story and to keep you turning the pages. They'll also want you to keep from speeding ahead, so they typically don't give you clear headings and chapter structures so you can create a roadmap before you start. However, nonfiction authors will often lay out their books in just that way. Their books will be laid out in sequential order, usually with one concept building on top of another. Why is this important? For one thing, you can scan the material that you're already familiar with without giving up too much in comprehension, and then read carefully the parts that are new to you. Understanding paragraph structure. The vast majority of the time, the main point of a paragraph will be in the first sentence of the paragraph. This means that understanding the first sentence in each paragraph is crucial in your understanding of the main concepts. This also means that you can read the rest of the paragraph much quicker because it's not introducing any new concepts but adding context to the first sentence. Techniques to read faster. The one thing that speed readers know that you and I don't is that using your finger speeds up your reading rate dramatically. They use their fingers to guide their eyes because they realize one very critical thing, that we can see and comprehend more than a couple of words at a time. There are a few ways to do this, and you should work your way through them sequentially, only moving on to the next when you're comfortable enough to push yourself even further. Underlining. The first technique is underlining. You can start by simply running your finger across the page as you read, underlining the words with your index finger. At first, this is going to feel odd to you, and you might get a few weird looks from strangers who haven't seen this technique before. Once again, go and grab something that you haven't read before and practice reading the material using your finger as a guide. Now, start moving your finger faster. If you were reading at 200 words a minute, start using your finger at 300 words a minute. If you feel like you're starting to lose control and that you won't remember a thing that you're reading, that's okay. Right now, you're battling your tendency to vocalize your words, and for the first while, you'll find it uncomfortable. Dusting. The second technique you can use to read faster is dusting. Instead of using your finger as an underlining tool, now think about dusting off the page of the book with your entire hand, moving your hand back and forth down the page. I often read on my computer screen, and this motion is very similar to the motion you'd use to dust off your computer, so you should be comfortable with it. Make sure to move your hand very quickly back and forth as you move down the page so that you're able to see the words through your hands, just like you're able to see the road ahead of you even with your windshield wipers on at full power. Again, it's going to feel weird when you read this way, but you'll soon be reading at a much higher rate. Circling. Now we're going to move on to the circling hand movement and combine it with the underlining movement we learned earlier. You'll recall that the first sentence in a paragraph is the main thing to comprehend, usually. So in this technique, you'll use your finger as the underline in the first line of the paragraph, and then make circles through the rest of the paragraph on the way back to the left margin. You'll be sweeping the entire paragraph in five or six circles, taking in the rest of the paragraph in chunks at a time. At this point, you'll start to feel like you're reading at a much higher rate, and it feels different than when you started. You won't be reading in the way that you were taught and lived most of your life, word by word. And that's okay, 
you'll get over that awkward feeling very quickly. Paragraphing. Now that you're comfortable reading at a much higher rate, you can move on to the last stage we'll cover here by using the paragraphing technique. You'll start off by using the same first line technique as you did in circling by underlining it from left to right. Then, instead of circling the rest of the paragraph with your finger, you'll drop down at least four lines and then bring your finger right back to the left margin. If the paragraph is more than four lines long, you can repeat the motion until you hit the end of the paragraph. Reading faster and comprehending more. None of this means anything if you can't comprehend what you're reading. Most nonfiction authors are attempting to build a mental model for you. However, they usually stop short of actually creating one. So, you'll create one for yourself. The best way to do this is to create what most people would call a mind map. You'll start off with one concept in the middle of the page and then start branching off the sub-ideas as appropriate and making sure that related materials are together. So, as you're moving through the text, make sure to stop at points when you want to remember one of the concepts and make sure you build it into your mind map of the subject. Although it's beyond the scope of the summary, you should try to make the mind map as memorable as possible. The more memorable you make the concepts, the easier it will be for you to recall them at a later point. So there you have it, a summary of everything you need to know in order to increase your reading rates to levels that you never thought possible. Good luck, and let me know how it goes. Hi, I'm Rhonda. And this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!